Good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, the Friday morning warm up, uh, number 126. And today we're going to be doing the looking at the Dorian scale, one of the modes, one of the commonly used modes, um, uh, plus all the other things that we normally uh, manage to squeeze into the half hour. So let's first of all just um, do a little bit of clapping and uh, I'm just going to put onto the screen the clapping pattern. Now last week we um, did a, a, what's called a metric displacement. We're going to do the same again today. Um, and it's the same clapping pattern which um, we're going to displace. So if you weren't here last week, the left hand two bars, uh, we're not going to clap, not to start with anyway, and that's simply the Uh, the football clapping um, pattern. Now, when we are going to clap the right hand um, rhythm, which is exactly the same rhythm, but it's starting on beat three. So, if you look at the actual pattern of quavers and crotches, you'll notice that it's uh, physically the same, but it's actually starting on beat three. And it's got a completely different sound. And this is one of the things that if you displace a rhythm time wise, um, it becomes almost unrecognizable. So and any of you that do improvising, for example, if you um, have a phrase, maybe your own favourite lick, try playing it on beat one and then try playing it on beat two in the same piece of music and you'll suddenly find you've got a new phrase because it's just so different. So we're going to clap uh, the just bars three and four as a loop. Don't clap bars one, or, one and two. Here we go, after four. One, two... One, two, three, four. Last time. Da 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 da. Yes. Um, let's just clap the the left hand two bars, bars one and two, just to remind ourselves where that has come from. So as I say, it's it's the these first two bars, but starting on beat three is what we've just done. The the left hand one is the the famous um, clapping song for football matches, uh, which originally, as I mentioned last week, came from a song by the Rooters. Um, called uh, Let Hey Hey Let's Go, I think, something like that. Here we go. Um, just do the le left hand one just a couple of times. One, two, one, two, three, four. And shout your favourite team name over those last two beats. Okay, good. Right, well, that's our, um, we've got started there. Starting to warm ourselves up physically, and uh, heartbeats, no doubt, rates going up. Okay, let's just um, get our instruments now, and we're just going to twang away, blow away, uh, scrape away for about a minute. Uh, concert D. use this opportunity to tune up as well. I hope I'm in tune. Or at least tune up to your own uh, device. me trying to sing a major third above should have sung a minor third really because we're looking at a Dorian scale which is a minor 
Anyway, on to the uh, chromatic scale. So we're going to be starting on guns at D. Yep, so E for the B flat instruments and B, 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 B for the uh, E flat instruments. And we're just going to do um, our usual thing. I will change this one day. Um, this, <laughs> cause you must be getting very good at your chromatic scale now. Um, let's just start at 80 beats a minute. And we're just going to play from concert D up to the D and back down again. One, two, one, two, three, four. I suppose the whole thing about warm-ups is that you do tend to do the same thing each time, so uh, maybe not such a bad thing. Uh, let's do that again. One, two, three, four. Uh, don't forget to always aim for uh, the nicest tone possible and consistency to the same kind of tone all the time. Um, unless you've set yourself some other parameter to aim for. We're going to speed it up quite a bit now. So after four, one, two, one, two, three, four. Couple more, quite a bit quicker now, 150 now, 150 beats a minute. Hope your heart beats not going up this quickly. One, two, one, two, three, four. And if that wasn't tricky enough, let's really ram it up to 190, a bit faster than last time. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okie dokie, chromatic scale. Always a good one because of course you use all the notes, probably all the fingers, and uh, definitely helps to warm you up. Righty ho, let's go on to the exercise sheet if you'd like to get hold of that. Not that one, that one. And um, we're going to be looking at uh, this thing called the Dorian mode. We have looked at it in different ways before. There's different ways of looking at it, really. Um, two main ways of thinking of the Dorian mode in terms of implanting it in your mind and understanding where it's come from is um, one way is to think of it as being what we call the second mode of the major scale. Now what that means is you take the major scale, for example C, let's just think simply, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. But if you start on the second note, D, and go through the same notes, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, that basically defines what the Dorian mode is. So it's another scale, but starting on, in this case, the second degree of the uh, major scale and all the modes uh, are starting on different degrees of the initial scale so and that's what I've shown on the screen on the top line there um, the major scale in the first two bars and then the same scale but starting uh, a note further up the scale on the second degree of the scale uh, on the uh, third and fourth bars so you probably appreciate that from previous sessions but that's uh, just to clarify that Another way of looking at it is a little bit, um, I wouldn't say vaguer, but it's, there are more different ways of looking at it when you think about how the intervals are different. So let's forget the major scale for a minute. Do you know your D minor, natural minor scale, which is the relative minor of F major? The natural minor. If I was to play 
D natural minor. Yeah, it's the traditional natural minor scale, the minor scale that uh, so many songs are written on. It's got one, two, three, four, five. It's got a flat, what's called a flattened six or a minor six. Dorian scale, and this is how it differs, and this is another way of remembering what the Dorian scale is, has a major six. So when you get to the sixth note, that one there, it's a semitone higher than the sixth note of the minor scale, the natural minor. So that's another way of looking at it, is the Dorian has got a raised sixth compared to the natural minor. Um, it's also got other things different compared to other scales, but I think that's probably the key one to um, think of, is if you know your natural minor in any particular key, raise the sixth and you've got the Dorian. It's got a slightly brighter sound than the natural minor. The natural minor is a scale of, you know, it's... Um, a little bit sort of medieval sounding uh, Dorian. definitely a more modern sort of sound. So that's a Dorian scale in terms of uh, its relationship with natural minor. Right, let's just play, first of all, the um, top line. So let's do the first two bars. We've done this lots of times before. You can probably do it with your eyes shut. How about trying it? <laughs> C <laughs> made. Um, can I just say on the sheet for the E flat instruments, it's oh. C major and D Dorian. Which it shouldn't be. Oh, crumbs, have I not changed the uh, lettering? That's a good old copy and paste error, that. That's probably the case for B flats as well. And sorry about that. That should say um, on top, above where it says the scale. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, for concert people, it should say C major and D, D Dorian. For B flat instruments, it should say D major and E Dorian. And uh, it should say A major and B Dorian for... Um, E flat instruments. So good. Thanks for that. And uh, I do check these things, as you know, but sometimes little things like that escape. So, okay, let's do uh, concert C major, two bars. And if you can, do it without looking at the sheet of paper, because uh, it's always best to get these things memorized. So uh, let's just wind down the tempo a bit. Here we go. Off to four. One, one. Two, one and two and three and four. Good old major scale. One, two, three, four. Yeah, one more time. One, two, three, four. I hopefully the notes are correct on your sheet, even if the names aren't. <laughs> uh, let's move on to the next two bars. So on the top line, next two bars. This is the Dorian mode based on that scale that you've just played. So in other words, it's the same notes, but starting on the second note of that scale. So uh, D Dorian or E for the B flats and A, uh, sorry, B, 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 B <laughs> for the um, uh, E flat instruments. All right, here we go. The Dorian scale. One, two, one, two, three, four. And again, one, two, three, four. One more time. One, two, three, four. And of course you will spot that it's a minor type scale because the third is a minor third, a flattened third compared to a major scale. So it's a minor sound. Um, it's used in a lot of songs. We're gonna come, come up with a couple of examples later on. Um, Moondance, that's a good one to listen to if you wanna hear the sound of 
uh, or Dorian. I mean, it's a subtle difference. It's not easy to f discover, uh, to recognize with the ear, but um, it comes with experience, of course. But um, let's look now look at the um, chords which come from this scale. And what you'll notice, hopefully I've changed all these ones, uh, notice, what you'll probably notice is um, they are all from that major key. If you're familiar with your chords uh, and what key they come from. If not, they are. They all come from the major key. Except that we're going to start with the Dorian note, the second, and work our way up to the, um, the octave. So the first one will be a minor seventh. Like I say, it is a minor scale. So if we started on the first degree of the Dorian and went up to the third, then the fifth, and then the seventh, and uh, we'll get the arpeggio that you'll see in front of you. So, um, so what we're doing is just taking the first note of the Dorian scale, and I've written there on the first box the root, the third, the fifth, and the seventh, starting at that point. And then gone up a note for the next bar, and done the root, third, and fifth, and seventh, but this time starting on the second note. Or the third, if you're thinking of the major scale, but uh, second note of the Dorian scale. So these effectively are the chords which are in, from the Dorian scale. But they will be the same as the ones which are in the minor. So we're just going to play these slowly, and uh, it's not something you need to memorise, it's just a way of listening to the sounds of these things, and um, sort of getting them under your fingers as well, a bit more familiar with them. So, okay, we're going to start with the bar, it's got a little number bar five on it, so it'll be a minor seventh. So it'll be a concert D. Let's just play that one, two, three, four. That's root third, fifth and seventh. One, two, three, four. Uh, just because of time, we're just going to play these twice. So let's move on to the next one. So we're now looking at the concert E minor 7. After 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. One more time. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Uh, now we're going on to the third chord in the Dorian mode, and this is F major 7. Concert F major 7, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's got a major third, that's why it sounds like it does. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and now we're going to go on to uh, concert G7. Now this one you normally think of as being the 5 chord, the dominant 7th in the key. But of course Dorian is all shifted up one, so it's the 4th. So but it's still in the key, still there. Let's do the, uh, so on the 4th bar now of that line, 1, 2, 3, 4. Hear that flattened seventh there? One, two, three, four. Okay, on to the next line. So we're just getting higher, we're just working our way up the Dorian scale for the starting point and then doing the root third, fifth, and seventh. One, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. On to the second one. Now this is one we haven't talked about much. It's a concept B minor seven flat five, or C sharp or G sharp. And um, it's what's called a half diminished chord. So now's not the time to explain what a half diminished chord is, but one day we will have to do that. Sometimes you see it the circle, you'll see B then a little circle and a line through it to show it's half diminished as opposed to completely diminished. Uh, but this is the half diminished chord. 
So we're doing the second bar of that line. One, two, three, four. It's got a different sound altogether. One, two, three, four. But it's still in the key. So. And then we're on to a more familiar chord, uh, major seventh. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then we've worked our way all the way up the Dorian scale until we've reached the uh, concert D again. And so we're back to another minor seven. One, two, three, four. And we'll finish that with a minor. Um, things to listen to, uh, songs to listen to, uh, one or two I've mentioned several times. Oya Como Va, that's definitely in the Dorian mode. Um, I, I mentioned Moondance earlier. A lot of Pink Floyd, I don't know if you listen to Pink Floyd, but I think they, uh, they like the minor sort of songs, the dreamy sort of songs, but they often put them in the Dorian mode. Um, the Great Gig in the Sky, uh, Wish You Were Here, I think that's fairly certain that is. Uh, another brick in the wall. I think all those sort of songs. Um, probably in D minor, Dorian as well. And also uh, famously in jazz, uh, So What by Miles Davis. That's a very Dorian sound. Usually the main cited example. Um, we're just now going to play some examples of the Dorian mode. Uh, exercises really. Although this first one is actually, if you know the Riders on the Storm by the Doors, it starts with a descending <laughs> piano, electric piano line. Very iconic sound. And uh, have a listen to it if you're not familiar with it. Uh, it's a great track anyway. And um, But that's running down the Dorian scale. And I've done an extract from that here. So on to the next line now. And we're going to play it nowhere near as fast as he does. So it's a little uh, exercise running down the Dorian scale. Um, I'm going to do it quite slowly because it's in um, it's jumping down in thirds, which is not something we've done much before. But these are all good things to practice uh, exercises um, if you do want something just to limber up on um, these exercises. This particularly because it's jumping in thirds, descending thirds. So we're just going to play uh, extract from Riders on the Storm. It's six bars long, so go on to the second line, do the next two bars there. Here we go. After four. One, not fast. One, one two, three, four. Again, one, two, one, two, three, four. Uh, if, if you're an improviser in jazz, for example, and you come across a 2-5-1, one, 
The um, although you wouldn't normally think in terms of modes because a, a two five one in C is just based on C major, but it's useful sometimes to think in terms of the Dorian scale because that first chord is um, starting on the second degree of the key. So a two five one is where in if you're in C starts on D minor seven, then the five chord G seven, and goes to the root chord uh, C major seven. So that first one's D. If you were to think of that as, if you were to think Dorian, and play the first three notes of the Dorian scale, you've gone from the root to the third of the first chord. Then if you go to the next note in the scale, so that's C, uh, D, E, F, G, A, B, You've played the root, the root, the first three notes of the um, five chord, and then the last chord is C major. And if you carry on up the scale, you will end up playing the next three notes, the, the root, the third, and the fifth. Sorry, the root, the second, and the third of the. So you can outline using the Dorian. You can outline a two-five-one. just by going up the Dorian scale. And very tastefully ending on a third as well. That's just a little thing I kind of discovered really, just by accident, <laughs> realizing that the Dorian sort of works his way round a two, five, one in a clever sort of way. Just three notes on each. Anyway, moving on. Um, extract from Oyakoma Vat is next, a little two bar tune here. And uh, the reason this is in Dorian is because it's in the minor, but the if you look at the sixth, it's raised compared to the natural minor. What we're going to do is play this, and then see what it sounds like playing it as a, a natural minor. So we're on the uh, two line, two bars here, extract from Oyakoma Vat. Dun, da, 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 that bit. One. Oops, that's a bit slow. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three, four. You recognize that? Two, three, four. Maybe, maybe not. One more time. One, two, three, four. Now, as I said before, it's a sixth which makes it Dorian. One, two, three, four, five, six. That note there, that's a concert B. If it was natural minor, that would be a B flat. Oops. Where is that note? <laughs> it sounds so wrong. That's it, I've just flattened that sixth to make it sound like it's come from the natural minor, and that's how different it sounds. Yeah, so that's uh, well, that's what happens when you change something to the natural minor, so don't do it. Okay, uh, one more example, um, extract from the Royal March of the Lions. Anyone know where this comes from? Well, this comes from the Carnival of the Animals. Uh, San Sen, if that's how you pronounce his name. Um, the little tune here, which is uh, again in that our Dorian mode. So let's play that tune. I don't know if you recognise it. Um, can't say I recognised it until I came across it. Um, the reason I came across it is because in my trumpet lessons, the teacher said, "Oh, could you learn this tune?" Uh, nothing to do with the Dorian mode. It just happened when I looked at it, I realised it was. So uh, okay, let's play the Royal March of the Lions. Um, it's a slow march, the way we're going to play it. One, two, two. After four, one, two, one, two, three, four. Uh, 
sorry about the tab. I should have double checked that. I haven't done me checking on this sheet, have I? I just realized the tab is uh, a little bit all over the place if you're following the guitarist, that is, if you're following the tab. Um, let's do that again. One, two, one, two, three, four. That time I read the music rather than the tab, then it sounded a bit better. And one more time. Two, three, four. There we go, a little tune there from uh, in the Dorian mode from uh, the um, Carnival of the Animals, that's right, the Royal March of the Lions. Right, good. Okay, well there's some examples of the Dorian mode and, uh, and as I said, the two ways of thinking of it is either the second degree of the major scale, but playing the same notes, so D to D if you're in C, or it's the natural minor but you flatten, uh, raise the sixth note of that scale and um, that gives you the sort of slightly brighter sound of the, the Dorian mode. Okay, right, let's move on. And the uh, last thing to do today, just to have a little strum, I've taken those chords that uh, we went through um, without the sevenths on them, but you can put them on there if you want. And I've uh, just got a little strumming pattern uh, chord sequence there which you can play along to. So if you want to play, um, practice using that scale, just making up some little tunes, perhaps, uh, or just play some chord tones. They're all going to be. It's all in the Dorian mode. So this is a chord sequence based around the Dorian scale. And it, uh, like I say, we'll just do it for a minute. And if you want to make up some melodies, or just strum along. So here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> One more time through, three, four. Finish on the tonic, which in this case is that first D minor. Okay, oh, I've got a message. wonder what that's all about. Somebody's going, leaving. Sorry, Dave, all my notes were wrong. <laughs> Catherine. Um, I hope they're your notes and not, not, not my notes. I hope I was playing the right ones. Um, I was doing, sorry? Uh, let me just get that off the screen. And um, right, thank you very much. Yes, uh, I did make a couple of errors in that. E um... Can I just say the E flat sheet was completely wrong? Was the it? Yeah, yeah.